The first time when I saw this man, I thought he was extremely tall until I found out that he takes the help of a device to levitate his fat meat from one place to another. And this is the spot where you can see his legs. The rest of the space below is empty. Like a hero of old. <laughs> Man. When everyone else was laughing at the joke of Gurney Halleck, you can see Tufir Hawat as well as his two other associates not smiling at all. Do you know why? Because Tufir Hawat was the security head of the House Atreides and his failure was the reason behind the murder attempt on Paul Atreides with the Hunter Seeker. So he couldn't afford to laugh even though the joke was funny. Look at these, these are spice miners, old technology. And then these are also spice miners, new technology. Now the question is, why are the Atreides people using the old technology for mining spice when the new technology is also available? Well, Baron Harkonnen took away all the advanced equipments from Arrakis during their leave so that they could reduce the expenses of the damage in their upcoming attack. That's why you can find literally no advanced machinery left in Arrakis. Paracompass. The moons here have a magnetic field, so it takes a clever piece of clockwork to sort it out. The Fremen people have a lot of advanced technologies including clockwork compass, sand compactors, steel suits, and a lot of other gadgets. So are we never gonna get to see their science lab? I won't be surprised if these people had been working on developing advanced weapons to tackle the Emperor. Crew of 21. Our ships can take six each and still three short. Look at the mouthpiece of Leto Atreides. He has two big mouth speakers, whereas the other passengers have just one small mouthpiece. It makes sense because he is the pilot over here and he has to keep a constant interaction with the other pilots in the area. So, it was necessary to make sure that he has a very crisp and crystal voice. I wonder what kind of element was used by the film production manager to make the spice. Is there any way they used red chili or turmeric powder to make the spice? Or just a combination of both of them? May his passage cleanse the world and keep the world for his people. Can you imagine what the hell would have happened if Gurney Halleck by mistake lost his grip with the hand of Paul Atreides? Paul would definitely become a menu in the lunchbox of the sandworm. You see the torchlight over there, pulsating after every second? There has to be another traitor from the inside who was signaling the ambush team to initiate their attack. Now, you may also have a notion that Dr. Yuhei might be the same guy who was torching to the ambush team from the ground. But just around one minute into the scene, you can see the entry of Dr. Yuhei and if he was actually over there, he would never be able to come back to this place just within a minute. Which means there's a higher possibility that more than one guy was involved in the betrayal with the Atreides family. I'm going to replace your back tooth if you bite down hard. Dr. Yuhei replaced the peck tooth of Leto Atreides with another tooth which is poisonous. If he bites the tooth hard enough, it will break and the poison will kill everyone around him as well as himself. But look at the needles in this tooth. Can you imagine the level of pain this guy felt inside when he bit the tooth real hard? Just multiply the pain of your wisdom tooth by 10 and then you can imagine. Did you guys understand exactly why Duncan took a 360 degree turn around before flying to the top? He could simply just fly to the top, pushing his throttle but instead he chose a very time consuming option. It's mainly because going for a vertical up at this much of speed would cause a lot of g-force and it would cause a bleeding inside the brain of Duncan. Also, it's easy to realize that taking a sudden turn to right, left, up or down at a very high speed will possibly end up with an accident. Why did Paul and Jessica use the voice on this guy but not that guy? It's because that guy with the scar is actually deaf. He cannot hear anything and Jessica knew that thing from the very beginning and said that to her son through a secret gesture language which you cannot understand without watching the movie with subtitles.
Look behind and you can see a sandworm fighting against the enemies of Paul Atreides. I guess we can get to see a collaboration of the Fremen tribe members and the sandworms in the coming future if this vision turns out to be accurate. It would be a lot like the Payakan from Avatar 2 joining the Navi people against the humans. I definitely want to see that shit happening. This is a sand compactor that uses static electricity to blow away sand or create a specific shape for making shelter in the sand. Also, it is sometimes used for easy travel in the desert. Do you know what this place is? It's an old ecological testing station. They were meant to tame the planet. Free the water locked beneath the sands. Arrakis could have been a paradise. Is there any way we're gonna get to see this ecological testing station being opened by Paul Atreides in Chapter 3? Is there any way Paul and his people will actually turn this desert into a beautiful planet? <laughs> Why the hell on earth are these people spitting on the tip of the device? And what the hell is that? Some kind of medicine? Are they going to start licking that thing? Jesus Christ. I'm not quite sure if I'm right or wrong, but I guess this device is used for recycling and reusing spit and all other kinds of moisture. Or maybe not. Why is everyone in the Gady Prime planet so bald and pale? These are the two reasons behind that. Gady Prime has a dark sun meaning these people are deprived of vitamin D. And then, this planet is an industrial area with a lot of toxicity in the environment. Because of these two reasons, their skin have turned pale and they have a consistent hair loss. The sandworms in the desert can get as big as 400 meters in length. But in order to get that big, they also need a lot of food. So the question is, what is the main food of the sandworms in the desert? These creatures take sand planktons as their main source of protein, vitamin and other nutrients. You can compare this food to the algae we harvest for the astronauts to survive in the space. It smells like piss and tastes like shit, but very healthy. My elder brother had a habit of screaming at me in the exact same way after discovering that I have finished the last piece of the pastry cake he saved for himself inside the secret compartment of the fridge. This guy was riding on the back of the sandworm as if it was a free f***ing taxi. Now that's not a problem but the question is exactly how do these people get off that thing? Do the sandworms stop for a while for the rider to get off? I guess the director of this movie will need 3 more years to find out a good answer to this question. You have a wonderful kitchen cousin. If Baron is the cousin of Leto Atreides, he is supposed to be the uncle of Paul Atreides. But in chapter 2, he calls Baron Harkonnen as his grandfather. What the hell was that? Let me explain everything in the simplest way possible. Baron is the cousin of Leto Atreides, but Jessica is the experimental daughter of Baron Harkonnen. Which means Leto Atreides basically concubined and made a baby with the experimental daughter of his elder cousin with or without his consent. I should have married you. Shield wall protects the city from the weather and the worms. If that city was made to avoid sandworms, how did the people finish their construction work over there? Even a 5 second of rhythmic noise can attract the sandworms to that place and the big one has the ability to destroy almost 10% of the entire city just within a minute. Is Paul never going to find out the dead body of his father as well as Duncan? Is Tufir Hawat still alive or is he dead? I hope there is an answer to all of these questions in chapter 3. <laughs> Thank you.